Hello everyone and welcome back to Jacklit Educational Channel. So this is yet another video for the environmental science entrance in which we are discussing most repeatedly asked concepts from the environmental chemistry portion. So this is very very important to note down everything whichever is discussed in this video. So get ready with the notes and guys if you haven't joined our telegram group you can join the telegram group for regular quizzes daily quizzes to prepare yourself for the entrances and also our instagram page for the current affairs and short notes so without much delay let's get started so here is the first thing which we are going to discuss today the very frequent asked concept that is the numerical part we will do very simple i used to tell chocolate numerical so guys if you haven't watched the previous environmental chemistry videos which are very very important for the exam the link is provided in the i button you can check the complete playlist and prepare better for the examination so let's read this question i know many of you will be also knowing this question solution but this is one of the frequent last concept that's why i have included in this video the question is what will be the concentration of citric acid if 25 ml of citric acid solution is titrated with 28.12 ml of 0.1718 normality of potassium hydroxide that is koh so here 0.12.1718 don't be afraid this is very simple mathematics you have to remember a very simple formula so that formula that brahmastra will know in the next slide so here already solved this question so i will tell you this formula it is actually very very simple whenever this kind of question is given you should know that one formula will be used that is this brahmastra that means n a multiplied by v a is equal to n b multiplied by v b somewhere it will be mentioned as n 1 v 1 is equal to n 2 v 2 and where in case of molarity also if there is no normality given molarity is given then also formula will be same that is m 1 v 1 is equal to m 2 v 2 so here m 1 means molarity of one component multiplied by volume of that component is equal to molarity of the second component multiplied by the volume of the second component so this is for the titration reaction simply we will put these values and we will get the answer so in this case what we will do we have to find the normality of the first component that means it is asking about the what will be the concentration so we will find the normality because here it is given normality so here volume is given how much citric acid volume is given as 25 ml so in place of va or v1 we will write 25 ml Similarly is equal to what NB into VB or N2 multiplied by V2. NB means here the second component is what? It is potassium hydroxide and its normality, its concentration is 0 0.1718. So we will write it here. Similarly its volume is how much? Its volume is given as 28.12 ml. So here we will put it as 28.12 ml. So these things we have to find out. Similarly, we have to simply multiply this thing and we have to divide it by 25 ml. So in this way, we will get that the solutions concentration of citric acid will be 0 0.1932 normality and we will get the complete mark. Very simple chocolate numerical. I hope you have noted down. Let's move on to the next question. So this question is on your screen and the question is the component of volcanic gas emission is what that is the major component that means what is the maximum concentration of the component of a volcanic gas emission and options are sulfur dioxide, HF, carbon dioxide, water vapor and here in this image you will get to know some more about the volcanic gas emission you can see in the volcanic gas emission with the ashes and water vapor we also get sulfur dioxide emission carbon dioxide hf hydrochloric acid and they will also cause acid rain as they are the indirect components for the acid rain so this is the emission of volcanic gas and they will also contribute to the ozone destruction so these components these things you should note down that means due to the emission from the volcanic gas then these will react with other gases in the atmosphere and they will destroy our stratospheric ozone 
and where these gases are released this volcanic gas emissions are released in between the stratosphere and troposphere region so this question was also asked once it is in between troposphere and stratosphere region so this is important and most important is to know what will be the correct answer for this question for that we have to go to the next slide yes next slide i have mentioned what are the principal components of the volcanic gases and number one that means major concentration is of water vapor so that will be the correct option for the question maximum concentration or the maximum component which is released from the volcanic gas is water vapor followed by carbon dioxide then followed by sulfur either as sulfur dioxide form or hydrogen sulfide form so when the volcanic gases are in high temperature release it will be in the sulfur dioxide form when it is in bit low temperature release it will be in hydrogen sulfide form that means h2s form apart from that other gases released from the volcanic gas emission are you should note down nitrogen argon helium neon methane carbon monoxide and hydrogen and exotic trace compounds also include sometimes mercury halocarbons including cfcs yes they are the ozone depleting substances as well as halogen oxide radicals but one more thing you should note down once the question was there in assertion and reasoning that you should know what does the volcano affect the earth's climate it affects in very very two important criteria that means in global cooling also and global warming also global warming we all know as it is releasing greenhouse gases that means carbon dioxide methane all these things it is contributing to global warming and it is also contributing to global cooling because it is releasing gases like sulfur dioxide this thing you should note down sulfur dioxide is responsible for global cooling very very important it is also one of the frequent last question sulfur dioxide for global cooling during major explosive eruption huge amount of volcanic gas aerosol droplet and ash are injected into the stratosphere region and this ash falls rapidly from the stratosphere most of it is removed within several days to weeks and has little impact on climate change but it causes global warming as well as global cooling so i hope you have noted down all these things let's move on to the next important frequently asked concept from the environmental chemistry portion yes the next question is on your screen this is about the atmospheric stability and the lapse rate this is in the form of match the following it can also come in the assertion and reasoning or single question can be come so you should know all these things i will tell you elr means environmental lapse rate dlr means dry adiabatic lapse rate salr means saturated adiabatic lapse rate so here you should think about which one will match with which one then i will reveal the correct answer to you so here atmospheric stability from the left hand side will start absolutely stable condition when we will say when the elr is less than dlr next is absolutely unstable condition it will be in the case of when elr is greater than dalr next is conditionally unstable condition when it will takes place when it is salr is less than elr and elr is less than dalr that means when the environmental lapse rate is in between saturated adiabatic lapse rate and dry adiabatic lapse rate it will be called as conditionally unstable atmospheric condition and finally dry neutral condition means what when elr is equal to dalr neutral means you can say similar so here similar elr is equal to dalr it will be the dry neutral condition very very important note down these things i am repeatedly saying let's move on to the next concept next again i match the following so this is also very very important air pollutants will be given and you have to identify which control technique or equipment is used for monitoring or removing actually removing these air pollutants so it is given particulate matter 2.5 sulfur dioxide oxides of nitrogen and coarse particulate matter so you have to think which option will be correct then i will reveal the answer so here guys option 2 will be correct because particulate matter 
is removed with the help of electrostatic precipitator sulfur dioxide is removed with the help of scrubber and oxides of nitrogen with the help of selective catalytic reduction and coarse particulate matter with what with cyclone collectors so it will be what it will be a2 b4 c1 and d3 and these things are very important and guys we have already made a video on the equipment such as electrostatic precipitator venturi scrubber their mechanism all the functions they are very very important i'll provide the link in the i button you can check that video so it is also very very important let's move on to the next slide the next question is also match the following and here in the list one pollutants are given and the health effects of the pollutants you have to identify so list two is the health effect so think which pollutant will have which health effect we will start with the sulfur dioxide pollutant so because of this pollutant what problem we will be having we will be having bronchitis bronchitis means inflammation in the bronchial tubes in our lungs bronchitis so sulfur dioxide pollution will cause this health effect coming to the next thing that is ozone ozone will cause pulmonary injury carbon monoxide carbon monoxide will cause as asphyxiant so it is an asphyxiant means it will cause suffocation so here because the carbon monoxide will bind with the hemoglobin and what it will form it is also very frequent last question it will form carboxy hemoglobin so as a result we will be suffocated because hemoglobin's function is to carry oxygen carbon dioxide in the blood stream but when it is attached with the carbon monoxide then it will form carboxy hemoglobin which is very harmful and it will not attach with the carbon dioxide and oxygen as a result we will be suffocated and here asphyxiant that means asphyxiation will be taken place coming to the lead so lead will be having the nervous effect nervous problem and blood effects neuro effect that is lead as a pollutant will cause in our health these are very very important frequent last questions note it down let's move to the next set of question next thing is not a question but it is also one of the very very repeatedly asked question in the examination global warming potential so here i have mentioned about few of the important very important global warming potential of the greenhouse gases starting with the carbon dioxide but we will know what is a global warming potential a little bit it is a measure of how much heat a greenhouse gas traps in the atmosphere up to a specific time horizon relative to co2 so co2 is the base with which the other greenhouse gases are compared and it is the how much of heat that greenhouse gas traps it is that thing which global warming potential is telling it compares the amount of heat trapped by certain mass of the gas with respect to the amount of heat trapped by similar mass of carbon dioxide and it is expressed as a factor of carbon dioxide that means carbon dioxide global warming potential is taken as unit that means it is 1 methane's global warming potential is 25 somewhere it will be written 21 so it will 21 to 25 n2o nitrous oxide 298 to 310 hfcs it varies from 125 to 2800 for example hfc 152a the global warming potential is 140 and pfcs they are also very very important these global warming potential gas are having the global warming potential as 7850 sf6 you should note down they are having the global warming potential as 23900 so if you will get some other data it will be slightly different from here but this is the very very authentic data you should note down and if you want to learn more global warming potential of other greenhouse gas also you can check in the internet but these are very very important that's why i have noted down here and you will know how the global warming potential is subjected to a greenhouse gas so the global warming potential depends on the following factors what are the factors the absorption of the infrared radiation by a given species so any greenhouse gases which is having the absorption of the infrared radiation how much it is absorbing that determining its global warming potential second thing is the spectral location of its absorbing wavelength so at what spectral location that gas is absorbing the wavelength that is also giving its global warming potential and next is the atmospheric lifetime 
that is how much time that greenhouse gas is living in the atmosphere it is not deteriorating so that also determines its global warming potential these three things are important note down these are the factors determining the global warming potential of a greenhouse gas so when we have discussed global warming potential we should also know about the atmospheric lifetime of the greenhouse gases important greenhouse gases starting with the carbon dioxide here atmospheric lifetime is not one it is 50 to 200 years for carbon dioxide but global warming potential is one methane's atmospheric lifetime is 12 years cfc 12 is 100 years cfc 11 is 45 years and sf6 is 3200 years you have to comment me in the comment section what is the atmospheric lifetime of n2o nitrous oxide ka atmospheric lifetime kya hai aap mujhe comment karke batayenge so let's see who is giving the correct answer i hope you have learned something new you have noted down all these things don't forget to like this video and yes you haven't subscribed the channel you can subscribe now to enjoy further videos and prepare for the entrance examination see you guys in our next video till then keep smiling and every time believe in yourself